So today we're going to go through the Watchmon Plus and why we've built it. So it was designed so that it can be used for the Second Life reused battery cells from EVs and other projects where they're using shared loom. So what you can see here is we've gone and grabbed one of the holders from someone that's very active in the community. And this is a 14S 2P cell configuration. You can see here, we're populating the cells in preparation for us to do this demonstration to a Watch One Plus. So we're gonna connect the ribbon cables here and they're going to be connected onto the Watchmon Plus eventually. Now we've introduced, if you've seen previously in a video, the Testmon, and this is us here connecting the two separate 7S systems with each of the separate ribbons, and we're just pre-preparing them. So with the cell holders, they're usually done in multiple stacks where they have many, many together. And in this case, it's a 14S system with two ribbons, each one of them pretty much handling seven cells in series. So this is us here now connecting multiple of the ribbon plugs. So you can see that we've plugged them in and we're now about to prepare and actually add them into the test mod. So something you'll see here is that we're always removing them when we're actually trying to do all our wiring loom because there's nothing more dangerous than connecting or adjusting these wires when they're directly connected to a battery. Because if you do something wrong, it's going to, well, it, all sorts of things could go wrong. So in this configuration, because the ribbon cable is very small, they can handle about 300 milliamps. We're using two of them in pairs and that's the configuration of the entire cell board. So what you can see here is we're connecting them into pairs with two of them wired together and we're adding the ferrule onto the end, the boot lace and crimping it on. Now you can see here we've done all of the first one so that's the actual absolute negative of the pack followed by the next six in front of it. And now we're moving on to the second ribbon cable and doing the next seven. And then again, the highest voltage, which we put as a plus so that it's a good indicator to us. What you'll notice is we skipped one there. The reason we skipped it is the fact that between the two looms with 7S, they've done a share of what's the positive one is the negative of the other. So again, here you can see that we're slowly connecting them into the test mine and making sure we've got them connected. You'll notice that all those pins there are populated onto test mine. In this case, we now for the second one, connect and we skip that ribbon cable because it would be the same as the last and progressively connect it in and put it in place. Notice that we've missed the 14 pin um, configuration on the test one and we're putting in that link, which is the little white one. Also notice that we're adding in a uh, cable tie and that's so that we connect the two ribbons together to make sure that when they're transferred from one to another you don't accidentally plug them back to front and damage the watch one plus or the test mon so here we are we're plugging them in we're now adding them back onto the pcb cell holders and we're putting it all in place and you can see that it's running i'm now pressing the button that button press is to move it with a long press to 14s configuration and then we briefly press one button again to get it and to make sure that it actually passed we're now transferring the system over to the Watch One Plus, and you can see we've plugged it in, negative first, positive second, and here we are, it's all together finally. So what you can see here is the Watch One Plus, you can see the cell holders, and now we're adding the shunt so that we can keep an eye of the state of charge. We're now providing power to the Watch One Plus from positive, and then again from the absolute negative. So in this cell holder, we're sort of configuring it through the shunt so we can see the consumption, and you can see now there's some communication going on. I'm just showing you here, this is the M5 stack running our firmware so that we can remotely see anywhere how these cells are behaving. We're now plugging in the temperature sensors. We've got three remote temperature sensors with different lengths. And again, you would spread them around your battery pack. Notice the flashing red lights here. This is because we've told the system to actually be balancing. And so we're mid balancing at 3.5 volt with one cell that we've deliberately configured with a lower voltage. So we can force all the cells in our example we're showing in a moment on screen where one cell, cell 11, is actually a lower voltage and we're trying to make sure that we're slowly charging up the pack and waiting until that final cell 11 catches up. So you can see here where it's doing the adjacent cell balancing where it will do odds and evens and balance up at half an amp each and progressively balance up this pack. We still achieve about six amp hours per day, so it's nowhere near as fast as our Watchmon 4, but it does suit this style of configuration and that's what it was built for. So here we are, we're showing the cell boards in its configuration with multiple banks, many of them in series, so you can get an understanding of what we're actually trialing this for. These cell holders are in many banks, and we're going to do another slide coming up to show how all those banks can be put together. So we thank you for having a look at what we've done, and hope that you follow up with the next video.